Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're out here to shoot two pieces of history. The first piece of history I want to talk about is the HSC that was manufactured by the Mauser Company and it went into production in 1940. By 1940, the war was on, Nazi Germany was on the march, and it was producing small arms for its military and police forces. This handgun was developed by Mauser, it went into production in 1940, and would stay in production throughout the war. After the war, it went back into production again, and it stayed in production until mm, the mid to late 70s. So the handgun that I have here does wear the marks, or bear the marks, I should say, of Nazi Germany. This was a war production handgun, and it is chambered in the then popular 7.65 Browning, which we call the 32 ACP here in the United States. It has seven rounds, I think it's seven rounds, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rounds of 32 ACP, and with the Mauser action, when you insert a fresh magazine, as soon as the magazine makes it in all the way home, it drops the slide and chambers the round. This little handgun has a, a cock hammer right here. You can see by the spur being down that it's cocked. You have a manual safety here on the slide that you can turn down to the safe position and you'll see a, a white lettered S there, but the hammer's still back. Now, if I pull the trigger, it'll drop that hammer safely on a live cartridge and then the trigger is disabled until you put it back onto fire. So it's an early hammer drop safety, if you will. Although other gu guns had hammer drop safeties on them by the time this gun went into production. So it's just a different take on the hammer drop safety. So put the gun into fire and the first round will now be double action, but you have the option of cocking the pistol and it has this nice sealed hammer area right here so that it's not open, you can't see the firing pin. It keeps the back end of the weapon sealed, which is actually a good idea based on our, our uh, gauntlet testing with hammer fired guns. And now the gun's ready to fire. So I'm gonna fire off these little 32 ACPs at our challenge target. It's a little over seven yards away. And it locks open on the last shot fired. There's no way to drop the slide. There's no facilities for it until you set, uh, insert another magazine, even an empty magazine, will send that slide home, okay? So it locks open, last shot fired. It has a heel release here on the magazine. And when you insert another magazine, it drops the slide to make it safe. You can either thumb the hammer down or put it on safe and pull the trigger. So this little handgun's pretty interesting. Its sights are awkward. It has a trough cut into the top of the slide. So the sights are kind of recessed a little bit in there, protected if you will. And this little handgun was manufactured, you know, quite a bit. I mean, there's a lot of them out there. And so let's take a look at the other handgun we brought out this afternoon that is a post-war gun, but certainly borrows heavily from the HSC that Mauser designed during the Second World War. The HSC was in and out of production after the war ended in 1945, but in 1977, the production of the HSC ceased. And this is the HSC. I also should mention that this handgun does have a magazine safety in it, so the gun will not fire if the magazine is removed. But in 1968, a then new company called H&K started production of its very first handgun product, which is known as the HK4. There's little doubt that the two handguns are very closely tied. You can see that the hammers in the rear are the same. It has the same magazine safety, magazine slide release, everything. The disassembly is very similar, if not identical. You'll notice that the sights are also set into a trough that's cut in the top of the slide. But the little H and K has one extra feature that the Mauser doesn't have. Now it locks open on the last shot fired just like its counterpart, the HSC. However, with the HSC, there's no way to drop the slide unless you put a magazine into the gun. So if you wanna put the slide home to go home for the afternoon, you have to insert an empty magazine to drop that slide. Well, you can also drop the slide by putting a magazine into the HK4, or you can simply pull the trigger with no magazine inserted and it drops the slide. But like its predecessor, the HSC, it has a magazine safety and is not capable of firing. This handgun also has an aluminum and polymer lower that makes it lighter weight than the all-steel construction HSC. 
This little gun is chambered in 380, but it was available in several different calibers. You could buy them as a standalone 380 or a 32 ACP, but you could also purchase it in a, as a kit or buy additional magazines and barrels, and the gun was capable of chambering four different calibers. So that's where it gets its name, HK4, for four different calibers, which included 22 long rifle, 25 ACP, 32 ACP, and then 380. So this is the 380 variant. I don't have the gun that has the kit with all the, the calibers available. Those are pretty pricey these days. But I'm going to go ahead and insert a magazine into the handgun, charge the pistol. These are flat nose rounds. You have a loaded chamber indicator that protrudes from the extractor over here on the side of the handgun. Hammers back, and just like the HSC before it, you can put this lever into safe, pull the trigger, and safely drop the hammer on a live round, put it back to fire mode, and now it's a double action pistol with the follow-up shots being single action. So let's go ahead and fire the 380 here and see how it shoots. Now let's go ahead and shoot the steel plate and see how it shoots as compared to the HSC. I will fire it for the first time though with double action versus the single action, which I did with the HSC. Very heavy trigger pull. And it locks open last shot fired. If you have the same heel release here on the bottom of the magazine, or the bottom of the grip, I should say, push that, pull the magazine out. And if you take the empty magazine and insert it into the pistol, of course, just like the HSC, it drops the slide once it's fully inserted. All right, so here they are, guys. <laughs> the two pieces of history I wanted to talk about this afternoon. I think it's a pretty cool story how this handgun was developed during the Second World War, and then after the war, this handgun came into being and pretty much knocked off the HSC, you know, perfectly. Added some extra features, made it lighter weight and gave it multi-caliber functionality and called it a new pistol. And we started to get products shipped into the United States from the then new H&K or Heckler & Koch. So pretty cool little piece of history. Let's do some more shooting. Field stripping both the HSC and the HK4 is accomplished in the exact same way. It's just slightly different cosmetically. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the HSC apart. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead, lock the slide back, make sure that the weapon's empty. I'm gonna go ahead and drop the magazine out, make sure that it's empty. Now I'm gonna reinsert the magazine, and let the slide go home. Now that the slide's home, I'm gonna go ahead and drop that magazine out again. And just inside the trigger guard right here, there's a little tiny lever that you're, you can use either the rim of a case, a screwdriver, or just your index finger. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push down, put the weapon on safe, push down on that with my thumbnail, and just kind of pull the slide off. It's that simple, all right? And so now the barrel and recoil assembly is in the slide, it's captured, but it's much like a PP or PPK in that the spring rides around the barrel, but the barrel is not fixed to the frame in the case of the PP or the PPK. So it's a very, very simple handgun to take apart. The HK comes apart in the exact same manner. The flies out here, guys, it's kind of crazy. This is a new range for us. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna lock the slide to the rear, check to make sure that the weapon's empty. I'm gonna go ahead and check, make sure that the magazine's empty, put it back into the gun, put it on safe, and just inside the trigger guard, once again, you'll see a little tiny button that you can push forward. Okay, once you push that forward with your thumbnail, I'll push it in, and again, I can just pull. What have I done wrong here? <laughs> Maybe it's, uh... no, it definitely needs to be on safe. take the magazine out and it comes right off. <laughs> I forgot the magazine guys. So again, you can see some differences with the HSC being on top, but ultimately it's still pretty much the same. All right, let's put the respective lower receivers back in their place. And just like the HSC, the barrel has the recoil spring around it. Oh, I forgot and it locks into the top of the barrel here so you can't easily pull it off. 
that's different from the original Mauser design. So that is your recoil spring hooking down into the chamber area of the, ba the barrel. So there you have it. Very similar in design. To put them back together, just reverse the process. Put your barrel and spring assembly in there. You have to be careful because this will fly back and hit you right in the face. Set it in there like that. Take your receiver, push down on that little button once again inside the trigger guard. Put the slide on and it just locks into place very easily, okay? Set that one aside, do the same on the HSC. Again, be careful that you don't let that fly out of there and hit you in the face. Pretty considerable spring force there. And again, I'm just gonna set the upper half and lower half together, pull back, and the gun is reassembled. Very simple disassembly and reassembly. The HK4 being a product improved HSC really kind of makes sense for a mid to late 60s era handgun for concealed carry. It's modified from the original HSC primarily in its you know, outwardly appearance obviously, but also the use of aluminum and polymers for the grip frame here. So you see the polymer comes all the way around to the rear here and it has minimalistic aluminum. They've taken some material off the front here. So overall, this HK4 is a very lightweight handgun. Now, again, it's chambered in 380, 32, or 25, which would be completely odd out of this gun in 22, which would be fun for target shooting. The 25 ACP, in my mind, being the odd man out. It's just kind of a goofy caliber, especially for a gun this size. But I think they were just going for the novelty of it, being able to chamber four calibers and being able to quickly switch between those calibers. So this little gun has serrations here and here, and they're pretty decent little serrations, but just like the HSC, that uh, came before it. Now this gun went out of production, I think in 1984. So this gun was in production from around 1968 to 1984. To load it, I'm gonna go ahead and take the cartridges in the magazine, insert them fully into the gun, and that slide goes home. Now the hammer is back, the safety is off, and the gun is in a condition that's ready to fire. Now this can get a little bit sketchy here. I think this is too many safeties that are a little bit too confusing and could result in an accidental or negligent discharge. So once the gun is loaded, you have the hammer back, you can put the safety on and the gun won't fire. However, with the safety on, if you pull the trigger, the hammer drops safely on a live round. That's sketchy for me because all you have to do is forget to flip that lever, be in a hurry and boom, you touch off the round and you've just sent a round down range and you don't know where it's going. So that's a bit sketchy. I would prefer that this would just drop the hammer in one motion, like on other guns. So that's a little bit awkward. But now you have it, once you put it back into the fire position, of course, in double action mode, the, the trigger is still disabled. It'll partially cock, but it won't fully cock. But now if you put it into fire, it's a double action pistol, or you can cock it and it would be a single action pistol. So it's just kind of an oddball and the safety mechanisms are a little bit weird. And in my mind, it's potentially unsafe. Modern shooters could easily screw this up using this gun that is safely. But even though it's so lightweight, it's still not very snappy in the recoil department. It's much more controllable than its contemporary counterparts like the Glock uh, 43. There you go. So very cool. Now again, you can drop that slide if you want when you take the magazine out by simply pulling the trigger, and that's a feature that's not found on the HSC. Now I only have one magazine for each of these gun, guns, guys, so I'm gonna dig out the little HSC. These are some deep pockets. All right, it's getting hung up on my pocket material because the slide's to the rear. All right, so here we have the HSC. Steel, have a lot of steel up here more steel up front, and then of course we have that steel back strap. So this handgun is considerably more heavy than the HK, and it fires the somewhat diminutive 32 ACP caliber instead of the 380. So again, you can load the pistol, just be ready for the slide to go home. Again, it's one of those oddball safety mechanisms. Both of them, of course, have a magazine safety as well. If you don't have a magazine in either of these guns, it won't fire, but you push that magazine in, the gun's suddenly ready to fire. Again, a potential gotcha. Now I had the safety on when I did that, You'll notice when the slide went home, the hammer followed it, okay? So now I have a double action pistol if I flip it to fire, and I'll go ahead and shoot this one double action. 
to start off, and then it'll be a single action pistol afterwards. These sights are somewhat hard to pick up as they're almost the same color as the target I'm shooting at, it's the same color of gray. Very, very pleasant to shoot. This gun weighs so much in the 32 ACP, there's no recoil whatsoever. The only thing that's a little bit awkward that some of you might have a problem with is with the web of your hand. You see how it gets right up next to that hammer? When the slide comes back, it could potentially pinch you right there. Other than that, the little gun is really ergonomic and pleasant to shoot. I can see why you know, military officers might want to carry one of these or police forces. It's a very, very handy little pistol and certainly robust and well-made coming from the Mauser company. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this little stroll down history lane with the HK4 pistol, the first handgun from H&K to hit the U.S. market and uh, went on to become the H&K that we know and love today. It's interesting to note the similarities between this and its predecessor, the HSC, and it's interesting also to note that the two were both in production for a few years there. So you could buy the Mauser or you could buy the H&K copy or product improved version because I would say that the H&K is, I can't say it's better quality, but it's more modern, all right? It's lighter and just feels more ergonomic than the HSC. Guys, if you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, the best way to do that is to become a Patreon supporter. There is a link down below. Please click that link, check out some of our incentives and consider becoming a Patreon supporter of us here at the Military Arms Channel. Also, swing by and check out Forge From Freedom. It's where you can get one of these cool recalled t-shirts or many others, and it's another way you can directly support us over at the Military Arms Channel, and we do giveaways every once in a while, well, pretty much every month, of Forge From Freedom shirts to our Patreon supporters. And finally, please swing by and check us out at coppercustom.com. It's our online store. All right, guys, I wanna fire off the last few rounds out of my HK4 and head home. Thanks for watching, thanks for 10 years of support. We'll talk to you guys soon. And we'll end on a malfunction, which is completely attributable to these flat point 380 rounds that have given me fits in a number of different 380 handguns. That's a first malfunction today. Oh well. <laughs> we'll see you guys later.